to the celebration of life of Terrell. We come acknowledging our grief, but find by the grace of God that there is hope, there is comfort and joy in the midst of it, and in the end, resurrection to be with the Father always. We're going to proceed at this time with the uh, previewing for the family before we begin our service this evening.
church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say glory to God. But as we continue in our celebration this evening, I wanted to first just simply acknowledge and, and offer thanks to Pastor Ned Houston, the church leadership, and church family for opening up the doors for us to have this celebration this evening. We are grateful. It reminds me of a couple of scriptures I want to share with you this evening. The first comes from Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. <laughs> I was just check. Check, check. Can you hear me all right? All right. Praise the Lord. From the Gospel of St. John, I'm going to read from you from chapter 14, a very familiar passage. As it is written, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now here's the part I really like. In my father's house, there's many mansions. That means there's room enough for everybody, amen? If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, that you will be where I am. And then Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord add his own blessing to the hearing, the reading, and the understanding of his word. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Asia Bradford to come and lead us in a word of prayer this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you, first of all, giving you thanks. For your word tells us that in all things, give thanks. Father, we ask, God, that you will touch every hurt, uh, heavy heart. Touch the Father in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you regulate the hearts and the minds of the bereaved. God, we thank you because we know that you do all things well and that you're sovereign and you make no mistakes. God, now we know that Torah, the Bible says that raise up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So God, we stand on your word and we believe in your word. When your word tells us that uh, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. So God, we're searching after the rock, oh God, for your strength, the rock of our salvation. God, we know you to be a healer and you've healed him well in the name of Jesus Satan I command you to loose your hold well, my shit, come on, son. in the name of Jesus but God I release your anointing I release your presence I release your spirit in the name of Jesus God we give you glory we give you honor and we give you power the power belongs to you and when I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth 
My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me. So God, we go and we thank you. We go and we praise you. We go and we bless you. God, because you're still good. 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 And we thank you. You're faithful and you're just. So God, we believe in you right now that you will, God, strengthen our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. They said it's on me. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. That's what I was at. Now, now, I know it's a, it is a, a, say hallelujah again. It's all right. Somebody else shout hallelujah. Somebody else shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I know it's a hallelujah. I know it's a, a somewhat somber occasion, but God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. So uh, we can't be down all night because we know Torre was a, a happy, joyful person. Amen. And I know a lot of y'all wanted to sing with us tonight, but we got to try to socially distance. So we just going to have one mass choir tonight. And that's all y'all. Is that okay? Is that you could You could lift your mask up and sing with your mask on. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all know Brother Torrey used to love to sing, and, and we're just going to do one of his favorite songs, God's Got a Blessing. I know y'all know it. Why don't y'all sing with us? Amen. Amen. So if y'all sing, well, clap your hands and give God the glory. Thank 
this one. Oh, you can hear me now. Hallelujah. Sister Catherine Houston is going to bring us acknowledgments. Resolution for Brother Toray Devante Johnson, August 13th, 2020. The question was asked in Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We are in place in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins a race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas in the province of God, he has chosen this time July 31st, 2020, to close the life of Brother Toray Johnson. His passing has left sadness and a deep void in the lives of his family, specifically his father, brothers, sister, grandmother, aunts, uncles, cousins, the Rescue Temple Church family, and many friends. And whereas Brother Toray Johnson will no longer have to suffer any more physical pain or mental anguish because of his debilitating and declining health or stay in the hospital or any other health care facility. And whereas Torrey Johnson leaves behind precious memories with his father, brothers, sister, grandmother, aunts, uncles, cousins, the Rescue Triple Church of God in Christ family, and many friends. 
resolved that we, Superintendent Pastor Ned Houston III, First Lady Catherine Houston, and the entire Rescue Temple Church of God in Christ family, bow in humble submission to the will of God and entrust the bereaved family to his care. For he sees all and knows every heart. We entreat you to console yourselves in the hope of a reunion, and that after life's remaining ills are past, that it will be like the healing oil to the wounded heart, comforting with pleasing rather than sad thoughts. Be it therefore resolved that we enter sympathetically into the sorrows of the bereaved family, and be it you hope through the master of all life that you will see your loved one again. Remember that Jesus Christ has conquered death, the last enemy that intended to destroy man. Further resolved, a copy of this resolution will be placed in the Rescue Temple Church of God in Christ archives, and a copy will be given to the family of Brother Torre Devante Johnson. Done by the order of the Rescue Temple Church of God in Christ Incorporated, 824 Man Place, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45229. Superintendent Ned Houston, the third pastor, Lady Catherine Houston, church clerk. It says, um, your son lives on in your hearts, in your family, in memories of all that you have shared. To Torrey Johnson's family, words cannot express the sorrow and pain we feel for the loss of your son. Our hearts are filled with sorrow for you all. The entire family will be in our prayers, our deepest sympathy to everyone in your family. Torrey will be greatly missed by all the workers uh, who took care of him. In sympathy, Margaret, management, and entire staff of Healing Springs Medical Care, Medical Care Senior Kenneth Yu, Administrator. Acknowledgements, the family of Torrey Johnson would like to express our sincere appreciation for the prayers, calls, visits, tokens of love, and other expressions of sympathy during this time of bereavement. May God bless each of you for your kindness and concern. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Houston. At this time, we would like to invite Stephanie Johnson, who will bring a dance of praise before the Lord in honor of Ture. If he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. Bishop Brown wrote this song for me. Hallelujah.
All right, now. Well. <laughs> God is good in me. Glory, hallelujah. Now we just getting started. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We're going to take a moment to reflect. And that's hard to do after that. <laughs> but we want to take time to, to read, to raise obituary, just a time to reflect upon his life, remembering those moments in which God used him to touch yours. If we could do that at this time. This is a, a portion where we would have a tribute and remarks. However, I was told earlier that there's an acapella group here that Therese sing with. Are you here? Hallelujah. We're gonna invite you up. What better way to show tribute than to have the group in which she sang come up and offer that gift. Good anyhow. Hallelujah. Well, 
we are just some friends. We would uh, get together and we all love to sing. And one of the last songs that we did sing with uh, Tore was I Surrender All. So we put together um, our own little rendition of I Surrender All with um, It Is Well and Total Praise. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all, to Thee I freely give, I will ever love and trust. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a tribute. But we're going to turn it over to Reginald for a special selection, then followed by the, my new friend and brother back here, the Honorable Minister Calvin Johnson, who will carry things to its conclusion. We also want to just take a moment to just simply acknowledge uh, Jan Campbell and the service and love that she had given to, to Ray. How you doing there, Jan? Y'all can give the Lord a hand for her. Amen.
the rest of my life I'll trust him Oh yeah I'll trust him He been so good to me Thou has taught me 
my son when peace like a river attendeth my way when so my soul.
God bless you. I say greetings to my bereaving brother and to my dear mother, my sister, and all of the family. I have my brother, my eldest brother here on today, but to all of those as well as Titus Jr. Torrey's brother. My heart goes out to you. I feel some of your pain because he was my nephew. But according to the book that I read, we know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. So because we know these things, we don't anguish and grieve necessarily like the world. In this particular case, this ended up having a happy ending. <clears throat> As I said, uh, Torrey is my nephew, <coughs> and our paths, in some ways, were quite similar. Uh, I was raised, well, I should say my father was Samuel Johnson Sr., and my mother was Mamie Johnson. Uh, Torrey also came through that household later on. When I came through, Samuel Johnson was a deacon. Hey, and the church musician, how many years was he the musician? So they, that, I know you know. At least 50 years. Hey, and I'm going to tell you something strange. For not. Nothing. Nothing but the blessings of God. And I know a little bit about talent. I would say he was one of the best in this town. All right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> and my dear mother, I think when she finally got out to choir, I, it must have been how many years did you serve? 60 years. The point being that I came up in a household where the love of God was not just taught in word. It was done through precept and example. It's far more effective when you do the walk and not just say, don't do what I say do, but don't do what I do, but do what I say do, which I, you, know, you hear that too because, you know, you might be the parent. But if they don't see you doing it, they don't know the walk. The reason that our churches are weak is because we are weak. We are the church, we are the ambassadors for Christ. We should be doing all the things that we talk about. We should be able to do these things. And Torrey came up in that household. And as a matter of fact, when Torrey came through, he wasn't a deacon anymore. He was a pastor. So I know that his exposure to the word of God was great because he was in the word highly. He, he pursued education. He pursued the word. And that did affect his life. Torrey did sing in the choir here at Rescue Temple. I know he sang in the district choir. He sang in the jurisdictional choir, as well as the other entities that he sang in that's written in the obituary. There's no doubt Torrey had a talent. Make no mistake about it. He wasn't just every singer, he had a gift that God gave to him. And through that same household came the musicians that we see here today, my brother Gabriel, my brother Warren, Roman. And that other one sitting back there, that's mine. <laughs> he, came, he came through here too. But when your kids come up in the church, they will do things in the church. And the other part, we had to participate in church. We just didn't come. You just didn't come and sit down there and play. No, you had to do something. In those days, saints did something. They knew that the church had to engage their life because they came out of the world. And they was doing something in the world. If you, have to, you have to have things for the saints when they come to church. It's more than Sunday. More than Sunday. And we have the answers to the world's problems 
if we live the life and teach the word properly. In that household, love, the love of God was taught. And God is love. We were, they were Bible believers. And I believe that the first affirmation according to our faith should be, we believe the Bible to be, come on those of you who know it, to be the only infallible written word of God. So you just can't take part of it. You have to eat the whole roll. That makes a difference. It makes a difference. According to some manuscripts that I had been reading, love is described as the unselfish, loyal, benevolent intention and commitment toward others. The concept of the love of God is deeply rooted in the Bible. We were taught that God is love. Jehovah is the God who remembers and keeps his covenants in spite of all the treacheries of the people. His faithfulness in keeping his promises proves his love for Israel and all humanity. In other words, human love towards oneself and another person and of the opposite sex and another person is general. It is used in God's love. Oh, the word was Abba. And it is used in God's love toward Jeremiah. I love you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Uh, we know the tenses of love. There's one called Arios. There's Filio, which is a tender affection toward a friend or family member very common in the New Testament and extra biblical literature. It is used to express God's, the Father's love for Jesus in John 5 and 20, and God's love for an individual believer in John 16 and 27. However, the word agapo is rarely used in the extra biblical Greek. It is used by believers to denote a special, unconditional love of God, which is used interchangeably with filio to designate God the Father's love for an individual believer as expressed in John 14 and 21, and Christ's love for his disciples. Biblical love has God as the object the true motivator and source. Love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and it's not directed toward the world. It is a love that the world cannot express. Love has, is probably the most misused word. <laughs> baby, I love you. <laughs> you should say, baby, I lust you, to be factual. And it goes both ways, male and female. We say a lot of things about love that we truly don't mean. But when God says he loves you, it's for now and forever. He never goes back on any word that he says. He's the ultimate promise keeper. He never fails. He never lets us go. We let him go. We also believe that in that same affirmation of faith that we believe that there is one God eternally existed in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, in Genesis, it was not written that let me make man. What did it say? Let us. Somebody was there. It demonstrates that Jesus was there in the beginning, as well as the Holy Ghost. We got to understand that part. 
when we study the faith. There are many reformations that don't believe Jesus is God. But Jesus is God the Son. When he came down here in human flesh, he's the only fleshly individual that ever pleased God fully. Fully. We heard that Job was a perfect man. Jesus did everything he was supposed to do in the word. He is the word made. Y'all read the book. So these things we must remember. God is all about love. He wants us to love each other fully without any all the things that we hang ourselves up on. Let me do this real quick. This particular part. In Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians that is, uh, chapter 13, as where it starts, Paul uh, preaches about his love and this charity towards the poor. In 1 Corinthians, he states that, first of all, love is long-suffering. It is, again, a fruit of the Spirit. It refers to a quality that does not seek revenge, but suffers wrong to act redemptively. Third, love is not envious or covetousness. does not jealously desire what it does not possess. Love does not promote itself. It's not puffed up. But in humility considers others more important than themselves. Love does not behave itself in an unbecoming fashion. And believers are to avoid even the appearance Do y'all understand that? We, the new church is a bending church. We want to look just like everybody else. We want to dress like everybody else. But I believe the book says that God's people were a peculiar people. Yeah. You can't be like everybody else. You can't look like everybody else. You can't talk like everybody else. You can't go every place that everybody else go. It is a difference, clear and distinct. And then you are his people. You will set aside once he gives you this love to be different. It's difficult for us to do these things because, as Martin Johnson used to say, this here flesh is a mess. It seeks constantly to take care of itself, takes care of its desires, its feelings, its desires. But once you come to the Lord, you're no longer your own. You ain't your own no more. You mean gave all that up. All these things are difficult. But you have to have a made up mind. Study the word. Keep on pressing. You don't let anybody tell you everything in here. You better do some reading. You need to study. So yourself. Listen, I heard the preacher this morning. What did you learn? What did you really experience? You got to experience this thing. Well, truthfully, you got to walk it every day. And we know this is not easy until you make up your mind to do all these things. Love does not behave itself unbecoming of a certain fashion. And it believes, to, and believers are to even, yeah, I just read that. Now. Love does not seek its own. When Paul sent Timothy out, he said because he had no one else that was like-minded who will genuinely care about the interests of the Lord. In other words, these people were going out making that filthy lucre on the word. That ain't changed at all. That ain't changed at all. It may be more prevalent now than it was then, since we have the social media. And it's a distraction to those who view the church. 
many people just see it as a place where guys pimp people. And uh, let me say this, a lot of that is true. A lot of that is true. Now, if you had money, I have no problem when you buy extravagant things. But when you get it from the people, and there's always poor people. You buy a car, you could buy 10 houses, or you could feed 50 people. But you want a particular thing for your own selfish motivation. But that's God's money. These are God's people, the poor ones, the ones that are not so bright and smart. All these are God's folk. And he gave us a charge to look out for them. Look out for them. Love is not easily provoked, irritated, or exacerbated, or made angry. Uh, you remember when this officer slapped Jesus? And Jesus said to him, uh, have I spoken wrongly? If so, give me evidence. But if I didn't say anything wrong, why did you hit me? Everybody doesn't respect. And they hit God the Son. That was his own people. Those were the people he came to save. And according to the word, they rejected him. Gave us a chance. You know that? Yeah. I'm glad that it worked out that way. Then the doors is open for the Gentiles and anybody else who that was able to confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that he was the Savior. It's easy to get saved, but you have to work to keep it. There's some effort involved in this thing. You've got to transform yourself. Oh, let's put it better. Through the Spirit, you can be transformed. But you've got to be willing. And we're not always willing. Love has all kind of positive characteristics that we do not nah, necessarily hold to, but that's all right. If you're going to make it, you're going to change. There's only one name under the heavens whereby we can be saved, and it is the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Let's see here. Paul used the phrase, the bond of unity, in Colossians 3, 12, and 16, where he was admonishing the Colossians to put their hearts of compassion, kindness, and humility, gentleness, and patience, forbearance, and forgiveness. Above all these, they are to put on love, which is a bond of maturity. The image is that the rods that are bound together are stronger than a single rod. When we come together, and God wants us to do that, he wants us to come together. When we can do great things, men have far more power than we give ourselves credit for. There was a story when these individuals were trying to build this tablet of Babel, and they was looking like they was going to make it. And God had to change some things had to scrabble the languages so they could no longer communicate. God created us in his own image. He gave us a lot of attributes far beyond any other animal. We're special. But we broke God's heart through sin. We were to never die. That we weren't designed to die. But sin will cause us all to die. Now we must also suffer. That was not the way it was to be. There's a passage, uh, or rather a parable that Jesus gave way back, and we call it the uh, parable of the prodigal son. But another way to look at it is that it's more about that father 
Think about it. 2020, if your son walked up to you or a daughter and asked you for their cut of the insurance that they're going to be getting, what would you say? But this father, he loved this son, he gave him something that he did not deserve, like he oftentimes do for all of us. And the eldest son, when that younger son who we call prodigal went out there and blew all the money, then he came back after his eyes were open, and for all of us, the world will make you think about the things that you were taught if you were taught in the word. These things come back to you, and many of us have. I'm one. The gracious father. In summary, I would like to reflect back on Torrey. Torrey got good with the singing. Made errors like all of us do. But he realized there was a better, he was through the opportunity of a long suffering period. It opened up a window of opportunity. And let me say this, he had maybe three terrible episodes. I seen God heal this brother the way he looked like he was brand new on that one occasion. I mean, he'd be down, I'm going there visiting him, he got tubes, he's unconscious. Ugh! I didn't think he was going to make it. But God is a healer. He got up, came through here looking good. I said, man, boy, you come a long way. And he did it again and again. But on one occasion, it didn't bounce back as well. But however, something about suffering, it gives us, some of us, the opportunity. Everybody's not going to have that opportunity. It's only very few that will get that opportunity. The man on the cross is a fine example. Now, did he make it? He, he didn't live no holy life. He on the cross getting ready to die. But God the Son answered his plea. He said, when you come into your kingdom, please remember me. And Jesus gave him the promise that when I get there, Hey, wait a minute, I believe he said, this day, you'll be with me in paradise. As long as you're alive, you have the opportunity to do what is right. You have the opportunity. Whoever you are, you have the opportunity. Sometime in the night on, no, we, we left him that Thursday on the 30th, he was not looking well. Early in the morning of the 31st, God dispatched an angel and the end of his dash, you know where you have the birth date and death date, his dash had ended. That was it. And for all of us who remain, you need to consider what you're going to do in that dash. That's it. Make up your mind. Torrey made it. I'm convinced we prayed many, 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 many times throughout this thing. He knew that he couldn't even sing no more. He wanted to. He would try. But he wasn't able. But God He's the kind of God that will take anybody back because he wants you back. You have to want to come back. And that's the way he'll do any of us. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's able to change your life. Yes, he will. 
Yes, he will. God did that thing for him. And I'm confident that on the 31st, around 2.30, in the heavens, what's going on? Heaven was rejoicing. When somebody goes up, the book says that heaven rejoices. And heaven don't get to rejoice a lot. I've been to a lot of funerals, and everybody go to heaven. Huh. Everybody, he's in a better place. He's in a better. You better know this thing for yourself. You can know where you're going to go. You can know. You ain't got to be in no doubt. You ain't got to be in no doubt. I hope I make it. You, you're in bad shape, but you're still hoping. You better know. So at this time, I'm going to close this thing out because I'm happy that I know that he said he had redeemed himself. Yeah. He suffered, but he redeemed himself. That's the blessing. That is it. And I thank God for that. Heaven rejoiced then. I rejoiced later. And I thought about that. Wow. Everybody don't get that privilege. So at this time, I'm through. I hope that I gave you something that would encourage you to be one of those that really make it. When we come together, we can do so many things. Just like they were trying to build the ba uh, Tower of Babel, we can do these kind of things in the church. When we get together, think about positive things. God is able to work with us. God bless you. Go ahead. On behalf of the family, we want to thank you for being here tonight and supporting them. It's so important that we hang together and that we stay together during these times. But I think there's something that Tere might want to say to you if he were here today. He would simply say, love God, love on each other, and be there for each other, because it's important. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and grant you his peace. In the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the people of God said, amen. On tomorrow morning, we'll be meeting at Vine Street Cemetery at 11 on the Mitchell Avenue side. We pull into the gate and we'll be lining up going up the hill tomorrow at 11. God bless you. Excuse me, I have a correction. We're going to meet at Spring Grove and drive to Vine Street. Did we get that? We're going to meet at Spring Grove and drive to Vine Street at 11. God bless.
nothing but joy in that city. Nothing but peace in that city. All the day, highly high in that city. No more the past in that city. No more the past. No more heartache. No more headache in that city. In that city. I tell you. Surgery. 